Big Slick here and today I'm going to do a safety review of the Perfter 858D hot air rework station. This is the latest of the no-name brands of 858 rework hot air stations that are sold on eBay and Amazon and places like that. Some seem to be higher quality than others. This is not going to be a performance review, this is simply a safety review. And as you see, this one is branded Perster P-E-R-S-D-E-R 858D. Uh, this is purchased uh, brand new in April 2020. So the first thing that I noticed was, like many of these stations, the Chinese have still not wired this correctly in terms of fusing the hot side of the line. In America, the right-hand side of the plug is the hot side. If you find the continuity, the fuse is right in here. So when you test it, you get nothing on the meter. Swapping this over to the neutral now, as you see here, there we have continuity to the fuse, which means that they are fusing the neutral. At first when I checked this unit out, just hooking from the cord through the machine, I felt that the hot was not fused. But it turns out they supplied a wrong power cable, or at least one that's miswired. Okay, I'm testing the cable that they sent with this unit. We are on the right side, which is the hot lead, and if you see the continuity, it is on the neutral. It is not on the hot side. So this cable is miswired or it's wired for some standard it isn't North American. Now we will move it over to another cable that I have that uses the same pinout. So we'll connect it to the right side. And with this in the same direction, As you see, this one is wired correctly. It's not on the left side, it's on the right side. So it turns out that the problem in this unit regarding the, the hot wire being properly fused is simply due to an incorrectly supplied line cord or a defective line cord that was wired backwards. So now that we have a properly wired power cord, as you see we're on the hot lead of the AC plug. Now we are correctly going to the fuse and the fuse terminal comes out right here. Now the problem is when you go to the switch, that is currently going over here, left side of this AC power input but it should go to the right side because the right side is the one that goes to the switch. So the next thing in order to wire this properly is I need to simply pull these uh, slide on terminals off and reverse them and that will then allow this to be wired correctly. Problem number two is that it's only partly grounded correctly. If you check here we're on the ground pin now. The bottom case is grounded fine and it has low ohmage, so that's fine. The problem I see is this front metal uh, connector is not grounded. So you get nothing there. Now the tip is ground. Okay, a few comments about the construction. Uh, if you take a look, they left all these leads very long, and in fact, some of these leads are darn near touching one another, and so that's very shoddy construction, so I'm going to have to trim all these off. These ones here are actually just within a hair of touching one another. Well, actually, I found a very severe problem. I noticed that the AC was arcing and it was right down here by the power switch 
So when I pulled it off, if you can see, there's a bridge right here that's very close to the other terminal. And this was where that just one little sloppy solder blob was holding this one terminal in. So I have to take this bridge off here and then re-solder everything and do it again. Very dangerous though, it was actually arcing. I repaired the AC power switch where it was arcing, uh, re-soldered it good, removed the uh, solder bridge that was on the underside here, and cleaned all the flux off the board. Now you can also see another example of how shoddy this construction is. This AC line capacitor is actually mounted on a slant because it has to clear this power resistor which means that the underside of this uh, AC line capacitor is going to get very hot. The low quality construction continues here. The reason that this red capacitor once I pulled it out was bent over so badly is that they chose poorly when designing this board or choosing this part that the lead spacing is substantially different if you can get a glance at it right there this lead on the right hand side is supposed to be all the way over here so you can't possibly get this one to work now I have another capacitor of the same value that has a more narrow spacing of the leads and it's the same uh, 630 volt uh, 0.1 so I'm going to use this one which should have been the correct purchase for this board not this one here. Cleaned up that mess so now the uh, AC line capacitor is nicely down and touching the board it's clearing the power resistor as you can see there and the correct lead spacing 0.1 capacitor has been installed it's actually the same part number CBB22 same as the other one it was just different lead spacing so now we have pretty good at least as far as this board is going to be we have pretty decent clearance between the MOSFET heat sink and the power resistor and the AC line capacitor has clearance at least a little bit between the power resistor and the other components around it it's about as good as you're going to do with this tight layout here really it's a poor design because you have two power components sandwiching two capacitors with the AC line so close I would view this as a fail from a safety standpoint so finally we have this wired correctly we have the new properly uh, configured power cord that re is necessary in order for the hot to come into this terminal block because that cannot be rewired that's standard and it is wired correctly for a proper power cord so now we have the hot going to the fuse the fuse outputs right here and now we come over to the input which is the right side and then from there we go to the power switch I have the power switch in the on position which goes there. I forgot to mention that I did measure the voltage across the working voltage across each one of these electrolytic capacitors. The working voltage seems to be reasonable on all the capacitors. The closest one I was getting close to 40 volts on this capacitor but it is a 50 volt capacitor. Uh, on this build every capacitor is a Chang X not to be confused with Chong X, which I have sometimes seen. These are all Chang X. I'll show you another huge safety no-no. In fact, I would say this is actually quite dangerous. It would be very easy for someone pulling this unit open to service it to reverse these two connections because these are identical connectors and identical connectors on the board well it makes a big difference this connector right here goes to the AC here's a quick video showing the reassembly after the 
corrections were made to the board and to the wiring.